webinar recap of genealogy with a Canadian twist. I'm Catherine Lake Hogan of Looking for Ancestors, where I help you find your ancestors in Canada. This week, we tackled a topic that's not often discussed, researching Black history in Canada. And this is part one of two webinars that we will be doing this month in February, celebrating Black History Month. Now, I do this webinar, these weekly webinars, just about every Thursday, and they're free, free to attend live, and then they're also made free for 48 hours after the webinar. And so this is just a short recap, just highlighting some of what we cover each week in our webinars. Now, if you would like to join us for the live weekly webinars, you can find all of the information down below. Consider signing up for our free weekly newsletter, and that will give you all of the information about how to attend the webinars and how to attend the full recorded archive of the webinars as well. And it gets all of that information delivered directly to your inbox. And so here we go. This week's topic, researching Black history in Canada. Now, arguably, Canada's best secret, best kept secret, is slavery. When you ask people, was there ever slavery in Canada? Most people are going to say no. I remember one time I asked, I asked a woman in a store just to get a response, just to kind of see what is the general knowledge about this topic. And she was really dumbfounded when I told her that slavery was a part of Canada's history. She thought it only happened in the United States. And the reason, I think part of the reason for that is growing up, we never learned about slavery in Canada. We didn't even talk about Black history in our history classes in school. And so you have people talking about Black history in Canada literally being whitewashed. And that is a play on the word white. It has been whitewashed from our collective history and our collective memory. And now I would have to say probably within the last 10 years, definitely within the last five years, Black history and the enslavement of Black Canadians is now being taught in the Ontario, at least I know for the Ontario history curriculum. I double checked with my kids and they said, yes, they remember taking it, but it wasn't anything really in depth, nothing really in depth. So we're gonna talk about the history of enslavement in Canada. So history, uh, slavery did exist in Canada for over 200 years and it included indigenous persons, people of African origin and of mixed race. It's been estimated that at least 4,000 to 4,200 people were held in bondage in the colonial settlements in New France, which became Lower Canada, as well as Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, Prince Edward Island, and Upper Canada. As family historians and genealogists, we need to learn and share about Black history in Canada. Some historians believe that the first free black person thought to have visited Canada was Matthew da Costa. Now there is not much known about Matthew da Costa and what is known seems to be conflicting. Uh, he has been described as an entrepreneur and, sorry, not an entrepreneur, an interpreter, interpreter and seaman, and was thought to have known Dutch, English, French, Portuguese, Mi'kmaq, and what was called Pidgin Basque, which was a, a pidgin type language that was used for um, when they were trading with the indigenous peoples for trading purposes. It was the dialect that was used and understood. Some accounts say that the Costa died of scurvy 
during the winter of 1607 at Port Royal. However, he was also reported to be alive in Holland in February that same year. Dutch traders had kidnapped him from the French. In 1608, Da Costa had signed a three-year contract with Pierre Duguay, Sir Dumont, as an interpreter on his voyages to Canada. And Pierre Duguay was also in relations, working relations with Samuel de Champlain. So this is where the evidence becomes conflicted. Some say that Matthew da Costa came to Canada. Others say he did not. What is known is that in 1609, da Costa was in prison in Le Havre, France, on the charges of insolence. So nonetheless, Matthew da Costa has been commemorated as being the first black person in Canada, and he celebrated as an interpreter between the indigenous peoples and the French explorers. And after that instance in 1609, he kind of disappears from the historic record and nobody knows what happened to him. Now, although slavery had existed in the indigenous tribes, chattel slavery in Canada began with the importation of African slaves. And this began in Canada in 1628 in New France when the first recorded slave was purchased. And he was a young boy, less than eight years old, from either Madagascar or Guinea. And he was owned by the British commander, David Kirk. The boy was sold to Le Bailiff, a French clerk, for 50 écus, which was the currency at the time. In 1632, Le Bailiff gave the young enslaved boy to Guillaume Coulard. And on the 14th of May, 1633, at Quebec, the boy was baptized and given the Christian name of Olivier Lejeune. And so here we have, a, it's a transcription of the baptism record of Olivier Lejeune. And it says here, I've translated it as best I possibly can. On the 10th of May, 1654, at the hospital in Montreal, Oliver Olivier Lejeune, servant of Monsieur Coulart, after having received the sacraments of confession and communion several times, he was buried at the parish cemetery. Sorry, this is not the baptism. This is his burial record, 1654. And the term used to describe Olivier was domestique, which was the French word for servant. And now in Canada, we did not at that time use the word slave. A lot of times the word servant was used. And so this is where it gets tricky because you have to kind of discern whether or not that person really was a servant in the employment of somebody or were they enslaved and they were being held by a slaveholder. So there is some debate as to whether or not Olivier Lejeune was still being uh, was still being enslaved at his death uh, to Coulard, or if he had been manumitted and was free. Nobody's really sure, one hundred percent sure about that. Newspaper advertisements, advertisements in historical newspapers give us some details about slavery in Canada the importation of the enslaved, the selling of the enslaved, and the escapes of those enslaved. Fugitive slave advertisements often feature details about the runaway, their description, facial features, height, weight, color, body, clothing, manner of speaking, and even their gestures and expressions. So here is an advertisement from May 30th, 1752 in the Halifax Gazette. And it says, just imported, imported to be sold by Joshua Mauger at Major Lockmer's store in Halifax, several Negro slaves. A very likely Negro wench of about 35 years of age, a Creole born, has been brought up in a gentleman's family and capable of doing all sorts of work belonging there too, as needlework of all sorts and in the best manner. Also washing, ironing, cookery, and every other thing that can be expected from such a slave. Also, 
two Negro boys of about 12 or 13 years old, likely healthy and well-shaped, and understand some English. Likewise, two healthy Negro slaves of about 18 years of age, of agreeable dumpers, and fit for any kind of business, and also a healthy Negro man of about 30 years of age. And again, this was uh, in Halifax, in the Halifax newspaper. All right, there you have it. A short recap of this week's weekly webinar, Researching Black History in Canada. I hope you enjoyed it. If you would like to join us for our weekly webinars, be sure to check out all of the information down below, how to get that information directly to your inbox so you don't miss out on our upcoming topics and webinars. And if you happen to like this webinar recap, please give it a like, give it a thumbs up, and be sure to subscribe to our channel. And all right, there you have it. A short recap of our weekly webinar, Researching Black History in Canada. This was the first part of a two-part series that we will be doing throughout the month of February. So look for the second part to come towards the end of the month. Now, if you would like to access all of the information about how to attend our weekly webinars live and how to access the archive recording, you can find all that information down below. I hope you enjoyed this short recap and I look forward to seeing you on our live weekly webinars. And if you enjoyed today's recap, then please give me a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to our channel. And with that, I'm going to say thanks for watching. And until next time, have fun looking for ancestors.